OK, so this is the Leaving Cert Higher Level Maths Paper 1, 2022, question 3. So this is a complex number type question. So we have part A here. We're given z is equal to 6 plus 2i. i squared is minus 1. Show that z minus i times z is equal to 8 minus 4i. OK, so we know that z is equal to 6 plus 2i. We've got to do z minus i times z. So z is 6 plus 2i minus i times z then, 6 plus 2i. So that'll give us 6 plus 2i minus 6i minus 2i squared, which is equal to 6 plus 2i minus 6i is minus 4i, and this i squared gives us minus 1, so minus 1 times minus 2 is plus 2, so we end up with 8 minus 4i. So that's that's it really, Q QED here at the end. So we have got 8 minus 4i here. Okay, so that's part 1. Let's have a look at part 2. Show that z squared, the modulus of z squared plus the modulus of i times z squared is equal to the modulus of z minus i z squared. So you've got to do all of these different things. So let's do uh, the modulus of z and square it first. So the modulus of z, z remember, z is 6 plus 2i. So we want to get the modulus of that and then square it. So the modulus is the square root of the coefficient squared. So the coefficient is 6 squared and 2 squared. And then we've got to square all of that. So that will be, let's see, 6 squared is 36 plus 4 is 40. So it's the square root of 40 squared, which is just 40. So that's the first part done. Now we want um, the modulus of i times z. We want to square that. So i times z is going to be i times 6 plus 2i. We've done this already, really. And then we want to get the modulus of that and square it. So that's going to be the modulus of 6i plus 2i squared, which is actually minus 2. So the modulus of that then is going to be the square root of minus 2 squared. By the way, we want to square this as well. So it's minus 2 squared plus, and then the 6 as well, which we've got to square, and then we've got to square the entire thing. So that's again going to be 40, I think. We've got 6, six is 36 plus 4, which is 40. So the square root of 40 squared is just 40. This is really the left-hand side. This is the left-hand side of this uh, equation here. So 40 plus 40 will give us 80 on this side. The right-hand side then, so the right-hand side is the modulus of z minus i times z, and we want to square that. Now, I think we did that already in the previous question. z minus i times z. z minus i times z here is 8 minus 4i. So this is just 8 minus 4i. So we want to get the modulus of 8 minus 4i. And then we want to square that. So that's going to be the square root of 8 squared plus minus 4 squared. And then we need to square that. So that will give us 8864 plus 16. So uh, 64, 74, 80. So it's the square root of 80 squared, which is just 80. So we can see here then, if we write this out, we've got the modulus of, we can say therefore if you like, the modulus of z squared plus the modulus of i times z squared is equal to z minus i z squared. So that's 40 plus 40 is equal to 80. You can write 80 is equal to 80. So that's true. So that's correct. Okay, so we've shown that. Um, that's part two done, really. Okay, now part three, we have this diagram here 
where we're given Z and IZ. So we have Z down here, we have IZ here. I could write them in. Z here is 6 plus 2i, and IZ, I times Z is, what was that again? Let's just have a look. It's minus 2 plus 6i. So i times z here is minus 2 plus 6i. Remember now we worked out the modulus of z squared and we found that was 40. So the modulus means the distance from the origin. So the distance that this complex number here is from the origin is going to be the square root of 40. So that distance there is the square root of 40. We worked out, remember, this here and we found that that was 40. So if we square root this, we get z is equal to the square root of 40. The modulus of z, I should say, is the square root of 40. So the distance from 0 out to z is the square root of 40. We also did, we also did the modulus of i times z, and we squared it, and we found that that was 40 as well. So therefore, the modulus, or the distance from the origin of i, z, is going to be the square root of 40. So this distance here is also the square root of 40. When we squared both of those and added them, when we squared both of those here and added them, we got 80. So by Pythagoras' theorem, this distance here squared must be 80. So that distance there must be the square root of 80. So this distance here is the square root of 80. And you can see that if you square if you square this 40 here, this root 40 here, square this root 40 here, add them, you will get this, the root, root 80 um, as well. So I mean the distance there is root 80 or the square root of 80 is 4 root 5. The square root of 80 is just 4 root 5. So I can write that in there as well, if you like, just to make it simpler. 4 root 5. Now, the circle C passes through the point Z, I, Z, and 0. So these, these three points here, as shown in the diagram below, not the scale. Z and I, Z are endpoints of a diameter of a circle. Find the area of the circle C in terms of pi. So we want to find the area of this circle here. Well, the area of a circle is just pi r squared. Area is pi r squared. We can see here that the diameter distance here from Z to I, Z is 4 root 5. So that means r must be 2 root 5, half of that. So our area here then is going to be pi times 2 root 5 squared. So 2 root 5 will give us 4 times 5, which is 20. So it's 20 pi, and we'll say units, units squared. I don't think we have centimeters or anything there. It's just, yeah, it's just uh, units, let's say. Uh, so that's it for... Uh, that part of the question. That's all we were asked to do. Find the area of the circle C in terms of pi. So it's 20 pi units squared. Okay, so let's move on to the next question then. Uh, we have square root of 3 minus i all to the power of 9 can be written in the form a plus ib where a, b are uh, elements of z. i squared is minus 1. Use the Moivre's theorem to find the value of a and the value of b. Okay, so First thing we've got to do is convert this to this square root of 3 minus i. We've got to convert that to polar form. So if you take, um, let's say, our x and y axis, we can see that square root 3 minus i is going to be down here somewhere, let's say. So this is our square root 3 minus i. Now, I'm just going to draw this distance here is going to be root 3, and this distance down here is going to be 1, uh, absolute distance anyway. I'm going to take my reference angle here is going to be alpha, this angle here. Now, let's work out the modulus first. So we're going to work out the R here. So R is going to be the modulus of this rectangular form complex number, so it's going to be the square root of the square root of 3 squared plus minus 1 squared. So square root of 3 
squared is 3, 1 squared is 1, so that's square root of 4, which is 2. Now to work out our alpha here, or we can even call it theta actually, it's just going to be the tan inverse, so we're going to get the tan of our alpha is going to be 1 over root 3. So alpha then is going to be tan inverse of 1 over 3, 1 over root 3 I should say. And then that gives us our alpha as, well, 1 over root 3, so that's going to be uh, 30 degrees or pi over 6. So we can use either one. So it's going to be pi over 6 or 30 degrees. Our actual angle then, theta, if you like, theta is going to be minus pi over 6 or minus 30 degrees. That's going to be the angle we're going to use in our polar form for a complex number. So, in other words, we have the square root of 3 minus i can be written as 2 times the cos of, let's use radians for the moment, minus pi over 6 plus i sine minus pi over 6. So that's our polar form of our complex number. So let's uh, raise that to the power of 9 then. So let's just come down here a little bit and write that out again, raise it to the power of 9. So we have uh, square root of 3 minus i to the power of 9, which now we know is equal to 2 times the cos of, we'll stick with the radians for the moment, minus pi over 6 plus i sine minus pi over 6. We want to raise that to the power of 9. Now, I'm just going to change this slightly because um, we have the cos and the sine of negative angles. So we have 2 here. The cos of minus pi over 6 is just the same as the cos of pi over 6. That's because cos is positive in the fourth quadrant. So uh, the sine of minus pi over 6 is minus the sine of plus pi over 6 because sine is negative in the fourth quadrant. So I actually change this to a minus i sine pi over 6. And we want to raise all of that to the power of 9. So we we have to use the Mavs theorem at this stage. So what I'm going to do is bring down that 9. So we're going to bring down that 9 here. Raise 2 to the power of 9. And then I've also got to bring it down here and multiply it. Multiply it by the angle here as well. So 2 to the power of 9 is 512. So we have 512 here. And here then we've got cos of 9 pi over 6 minus i sine 9 pi over 6. So what's all this equal to? Let's see. We have 512, so that's fine. Let's see, we'll just write that down again, 512. Cos, uh, let's simplify this, well we can divide by 3, so it's uh, 3 pi over 2 minus i sine 3 pi over 2. Now 3 pi over 2, if you have a look at your argon diagram here, is actually this angle here, it's 270 degrees. Remember we could have done this in degrees either, we, we should get the same answer. But um, let's have a look at the sine and the cos of this angle here. So it's 512 out here. The cos of uh, 270 degrees are 3 pi over 2. 1.5 pi is 0. You can see that on page 13 of your maths tables uh, if you look at the unit circle there. So also uh, the sine then is going to be minus 1. So we have minus i and the sine of... Uh, 3 pi over 2 is minus 1. Okay, so what do we end up with here? We end up with 5, 1, 2 times 0, which is 0. Minus minus is plus 1i. So it's going to be plus 5, 1, 2i. And that's really our answer, I think. Let's just see what way they want us to give our answer. It says, use the Moivre's theorem to find the value of a and b when we have it in this format here. So our answer then... Formally, then, our answer is a is equal to 0 and b is equal to 5, 1, 2. I 
think that's the way we need to write this out. Find the value of a and the value of b. So that's it. a is 0 and b is 512. And that's it for this question.